South Carolina Gamecocks on a resurgence as they have captured five victories so far this season. Number six would make them bowl eligible. They are also gunning for their fourth consecutive SEC victory. And today, they take on the Arkansas Razorbacks. And hello again, everybody. I am Dave Deal. So glad you could be with us on our all-tell SEC game okay, of the week. Was... And this Gamecock club certainly has turned the corner. They have won three close ball games, none bigger than last week in Knoxville when they knocked off the Volunteers, and they are doing it behind a sophomore quarterback that is putting up some terrific numbers of late. Look where Blake Mitchell is in terms of SEC numbers. He is number uh, number one in completions, number one in TD passes, third in passing efficiency, his first year handling the football as a starter in the Southeastern Conference. And Dave Rowe, this young man seems to be more and more confident with each game. Oh, absolutely, Dave. He's learning under fire. He's very comfortable with the offense that Steve Spurrier has asked him to throw. But he's also gaining confidence in that short ball. He throws that really well. He's going to have to start throwing long. But I look for him. He brings a lot of confidence to this offense. And don't keep, I should say, keep your eye on number four, Sidney Rice, off to the right side. He is a go-to guy. He catches everything they throw at him. A touchdown uh, reception in every game that he has played. Another freshman that has made some noise, Darren McFadden of Arkansas. Folks, uh, 190 yards two weeks ago against the Georgia Bulldogs. He will be a show today as well. But the biggest news in Fayetteville, true freshman Casey Dick making his first start. Dave, they're taking the red shirt off of him. What does that mean? Well, what they want from Casey Dick is a spark, Dave. Arkansas needs a threat of a passing game to complement that great great running game. They, he's got a strong arm. My question is, is how fast can he grow up? Well, let's talk about your keys to the game. It's our Toyota keys to the game. What do you think? Well, first of all, for South Carolina, it's not just a passing fancy. They, South Carolina is committed to the pass. They are winning behind a well-balanced passing attack that's ranked third in the conference. And for Arkansas, it's running with the Hogs. The Hogs are running hog wild against everybody. They're ranked sixth in the nation, averaging 256 yards, Dave. And at the end of this game, you'll know the names, McFadden, Jones, and Hillis. The 14th meeting between Arkansas and South Carolina set to get underway. Gamecocks win the toss. They will receive on a very windy day, but a gorgeous day to be playing some football in the Southeastern Conference here in the Ozarks. And kicking off for the Arkansas Razorbacks, Brian Vavra, the freshman. And it sails deep, deep through the end zone and in to the stands. And it has uh, been an interesting year for the first year defensive coordinator here at Arkansas, Reggie Herring. And for more on the coach, let's check in with Dave Baker. Hey guys, uh, Reggie Herring, you mentioned that he came here with big numbers, big salary, big reputation, had trouble early on, but he's got an awfully young defense. He said that during the spring, he'll only have three linebackers on scholarships. He said what he's gonna try to do this afternoon is play a lot of press coverage. He said we can't dictate what South Carolina runs, we can dictate what routes they run, though. Wind is going to be a huge factor. Steve Spurrier talked to Dave Rowe and I. They're going to go ahead, and they took the ball to start off. Spurrier said, you've got to play with the wind for two quarters anyway. Mitchell stands in the pocket, dumps it off to Mike Davis. Davis takes it to the 23-yard line. And here's a look at our Chevy starting lineups. Mike Davis, a true freshman out of Columbia, South Carolina, gets the start at tailback. Fullback Dacus Turman has a bum ankle, but he will play a little bit today. And up front for these guys, this will be the third straight game that this offensive line has started together. And, of course, they got off to a, uh, I would say, a suspect start. Uh, so the situation has been very fluid up front, but uh, they have settled on this group. Here's a little toss sweep to Davis. He gets it out over the 30, and that'll be a first down for the Gamecocks to the 33-yard line. Mikel Vaughn on the tackle for Arkansas. Our Chevy defensive lineup for the Razorbacks. Not a huge front four for this Arkansas team. Keith Jackson has really come on to his own this year. He's dropped about 35 pounds, and that added energy has provided a spark up front. Elijah Butu is just a tackling machine. He is second in the Southeastern Conference in tackles per game at about 10.6, and that secondary has gotten better. They have changed around safeties and corners, but they have settled on that group right now. Handoff off the left side, big hit by Randy Kelly as Mike Davis picks up a couple. 
Jamal Anderson also in on the stop. And there is Coach Steve Spurrier. When I asked him, I said, how big was that win for your club last week against Tennessee in terms of just buying into what you're doing and, and buying into the philosophy that, yeah, this is a decent football team. And he says, David, didn't start last week. It actually started three weeks ago when we sputtered in the first half against yeah. Kentucky, did the same against Vandy, found ways to win. Yeah, that's, that's what good teams do, Dave. They find a way to win. Now, South Carolina's had no running game whatsoever, but they've had a passing game. They need a little bit of a running game to keep Arkansas honest today. Started off, they had a good run to start. Mitchell fires a little slant across the middle. That pass is caught out to the 43-yard line. Actually marked at the 42-yard line. Kenny McKinley on the reception, brought down by Chris Houston. And it is a, uh, it's really been breezy since we got to town early yesterday morning. And that's yeah, going straight down the field, Dave, right in uh, South Carolina's face. And it's a 30-mile-an-hour gust uh, <laughs> currently, but that looked a little bit more than 30 miles an hour. <laughs> so third and about a yard and a half for the Gamecocks. That handoff goes to Dacus Terman, the senior out of Washington, Georgia, gets it over the purple line, and that'll be a first down for the Gamecocks. Boy, this one, Terman almost uh, tripped on this ball. When he gets a good push in the middle, he gets good penetration. You see Terman, he's almost bent over. He had a great lean. You see the purple line, as you said, Dave, he made it pass. That's what you want to do if you're Steve Spurrier in the offense. Move those chains. Do it by running, mix it up, find that little short passing game. Arkansas has got a good defensive scheme to stop that underneath pass. We talked a lot with their coaches yesterday, and they think they're going to stop that. So they haven't yet. We'll see if they can. Hand off to Davis off the right side. Out over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Jamal Anderson with his second stop for the Razorbacks. You mentioned the running numbers, and they have not been very good for South Carolina. And Sam Alajabutu in the middle, Dave, will do his part to keep those numbers down. Boy, he just has an eye for the ball. I mean, you know what's amazing? You don't really see the ball, Dave, when it's handed off. But Alajabutu, what he does is he moves. He plays his key well. He is always at the ball. Doesn't overrun. Awfully small, though, you know. I mean, he is, he's just small. 5'9", 227, but plays with his heart. Interesting, Dave, that Sam and Blake Mitchell went to the same high school in LaGrange, Georgia, going toe-to-toe -to -toe today. Wide open at the 50-yard line. Pass is caught into Arkansas territory. That will be good enough for a first down as Chris Clark makes the reception. That's his 16th on the year, the senior out of Lexington, South Carolina. Well, they had some pressure. The pressure was coming. They had a twist in the middle. You see the twist in the middle. Now, come up and watch Blake. He just steps back up in there. Keith Jackson was the one who leveled him on that play. Again, good little dump off. That's what Blake Mitchell has done so well. Primary receivers are covered. Come back to that secondary receiver. Find him underneath. Carlos Thomas, who suffered a concussion against Tennessee. Anybody that saw that game remembers that. Uh, serious incident is not here with the team. They will reevaluate him on Monday and hope to have him back for the Gators next weekend. Flag is down at the line of scrimmage as the pass ball is incomplete. <laughs> South Carolina's rushing offense, Dave, as we've talked about, 83 yards a game. That is yeah. 113th in the country. They average less than three yards per carry. And, you know, as Coach Burrier says, it's, uh, it's a combination of guys not getting the job done. It's also a combination of coaching, because yeah. he says it. <laughs> and there is Coach Spurrier. He, you know, it's interesting that he says it's, uh, you know, it's a yeah. combination of all. I mean, oh, it's it not is. one aspect. It's all of us. As you look at the first and ten line, which is presented by Nexium, the Purple Pill. Yeah, and you bring up a really good point, Dave. It is coaching. Let's face it. Coaches are they're the final line of responsibility. And they just have, they have not been able to run the ball. Of course, the way Blake Mitchell's playing, I don't know if you want to run it. Pass is dropped by Kenny McKinley, but a flag comes in. Shedrick Johnson, the freshman out of Sweeney, Texas, with the coverage for the Razorbacks. Buzz, what'd you see? Backside had a great look at it, Dave. From the backside, you'll see it on the replay. The hand came in early and often. It looked good on the front side, but he was all over yeah. him behind the receiver. Well, McKinley was one of those guys that Arkansas coaches were concerned about. They think he's a real game-breaker. 
See that? You see that right hand? That's the hand that Dave was talking about. The left hand is up in there, but that right hand gets you in trouble because it's on the back side. That's exactly what Dave Baker uh, saw. That right hand on the back. There is Houston Nutt says this team can't really afford to uh, hurt themselves today. Turnovers and penalties were a key uh, component to his club having some success today. It has been a uh, difficult run, to say the least, this year for Houston Nutt. But, you know, you asked him the question, uh, you know, he's an Arkansas guy. He understands yep. what it's like to be the head coach here. So it hasn't really knocked him back any in terms of any criticism that's come his way to his program's way. He knew he knew what this was all about at Arkansas. And a young, young team. Oh, Look yeah. at that. Only two seniors on offense, three on defense on their two deep depth chart. Folks, that's not a lot of experience. Yeah, and that's the first thing he mentions to us. He said, boy, we got a lot of boys coming back. Mitchell fires a slant looking for Sidney Rice. He bobbles it. It'll be incomplete. Now to bring up second down, Michael Grant out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, on the coverage. And Dave, there's a there's a good example of that scheme that they talked about. That covering underneath, they're going to force Blake Mitchell to throw long. They are not going to allow him to throw those little darts inside, the little post patterns. They're going to make him go, pull that ball down, and go over top. Arkansas, do you put pressure on him? Do you come? I think you come. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage and nearly intercepted by Mikel Vaughn, but it falls harmlessly to the ground. That'll bring up a third down. And Reggie Herring says he likes to bring calculated aggression. Well, there's aggression. Number 24, Lachabutu. That's aggression. He's right in there. And the ball got tipped on the line, those big linemen right there. You got to put those line, those hands up. I think that was Anderson, 92, got that tip. And the drive starts at the 20-yard line for South Carolina. They've moved it down to the 33 of Arkansas, but they face a third down and 10. Play clock already down to five seconds. Here they come again. Mitchell dropped at the 45-yard line. Matero Richardson, the sophomore from Marlin, Texas, will get credit for the sack, and the Gamecocks will have to punt it away. What a sack it was down the left of your, right of your screen. See him coming on the outside right there? Clear. That's Richardson. Richardson's far left. There he is right there. Now watch. He's going to just come on a dart around the outside. Look at him. Gets a running start, and I mean he's nailed. Buzz. Dave, take a look at this wind here on this punt. It's blowing across the field toward the press box. The sun and the wind are going to make field and punts a very interesting proposition today. The end over end punt from Josh Brown will roll into the end zone. And so Arkansas will take it out to the 20. A 43-yard punt that will net 23. Impressive as he keeps uh, improving with each game. Of course, Kyle Roper. The tremendous center. And there is our true freshman quarterback, Casey Dick, the freshman from Allen, Texas, making his first start here at home against South Carolina. That handoff to McFadden, and he is dropped from probably about a yard loss from Terrell Davis, who also is making his first career start, a late insertion into the starting lineup this week. Yeah, this is an interesting run. Terrell, Terrell Davis is starting. He's on the backside linebacker, and he runs. He doesn't get blocked, but he just runs down the line and catches it from behind. Can't have that. Play is a little bit slow developing. Coach, Davis will kill him from backside there, Dave. Well, he has been a special teams performer, and the coaches say that he's just been around the football, and they felt that it was time for him to get on the field. So... Probably a good start for Terrell Davis. Casey Dick's first pass throws a rock. It is caught by Cedric Washington. Out close to the 30-yard line. He needed to get to the front edge of that purple line, and we'll see where they spot it. Oh, I think he made a mistake. He was over the 30-yard line. He was over. First pass left right of your screen. Left of your screen, I should say, right there. Look, he's past the 30. He goes back inside trying to pick up more yards. You've got to know where that first down marker is. Well, he didn't get it. It's going to be fourth down at about six inches. And, boy, what a tough call for Houston Nutt already here in the opening moments. Well, you want to be popular? Go for it and make it. You want to be smart? Punt it away. Hey, what the heck? They're going to go for it. 
At two and five, Dave, 0 oh and yeah, four. That's right. That's a good. That's a good call. You're exactly right. Why not? Why not? And you got a running back back there with McFadden. You might come out and do a hard count, but uh, you watch that up back. AC Dick on a quarterback sneak. I don't know. Oh no, I don't think so. They did not get it. They did not get it. Oh, I can't. You know, I you know, I've told you a thousand times how much I hate the quarterback sneak. You're standing there flat footed. You got nothing going on. You got those big running backs back there. You give it to them. Again, look, he's going to go right here, and he doesn't get anything. He gets stuffed on the line. They came down there. Tucker came in there. Laurie, 48, came in there. And just, they lined up. Watch him crush right here. See that crush right there? It's almost like they knew it was quarterback sneak. He, I don't know if he got back to the line of scrimmage. There is John Thompson, who was a one-time defensive coordinator here. Went down to Florida after a stop here, then became head coach at East Carolina. That didn't work out, and Steve Spurrier brought him on staff. So he's a co-defensive coordinator again, this time with Tyrone Nix. Boy, what field position? 30-yard line? Mitchell throws it up for Rice. Pass is caught. Oh, what great hands by Sidney Rice. That is catch number 43 on the year. A gain of 15. This is a simple route, Dave. What he does is gets the defensive back to turn his back right there. Now, defensive back can't see anything. That's Michael Go. Look at that. Look the ball in. Get that foot down in bounds. And I'll tell you this. Sidney Rice does not bobble the ball. He just uh, he catches it in stride. Was a After the play, foul. Number two on the defense. Penalty will be half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. That's Chris Houston. Whistle for the personal foul. Alltel presents Text to Win SEC Trivia Challenge. Today's question is, who holds the South Carolina record for most touchdowns scored in a single season? Harold Green, George Rogers, Sterling Sharp. Use your Alltel wireless phone to text your answer to short code SEC fan at 732-326 or visit jpsports.com to submit your answer. You will be entered to win a trip to the SEC championship game. Might have to start thinking about yeah. him. See the last three games, seven touchdowns. He has scored a touchdown reception in every game he has played this year. Mitchell, got back to pass. Over the middle, batted in the air, and nearly intercepted, plus nearly caught. And Dave, they had him doubled on the play. When Rice came off the line, he had coverage up on the line, and he had deep coverage that was just kind of shading him. Michael Grant and uh, Vaughn, 31, they were just kind of shading him. Red zone offense for South Carolina. They are tied for third in the league at 83%, but the biggest number is they are first in the conference at 70.8% of the time. They score a touchdown. Red zone presented by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Incomplete looking for Sidney Rice in the corner of the end zone. Randy Kelly on that coverage. Boy, and Rice got good separation, but uh, what Arkansas did is they made they made Blake Mitchell throw quickly. They they set back there. They brought people. They covered one on one, and they made up. They just made them get rid of it in a hurry. Buzz, let's check in with you. Hey, Dave. Uh, you know if they don't get this first down here, the way this wind is blowing on the field, field goal is no sure thing, and that may have been what entered partially into Houston Nuts thinking. But they've got to get a stop right here. Does Arkansas? Third and goal from the seven. Pressure comes. Mitchell's hit. Throws it up. Oh, my goodness. What a catch from Sidney Rice. Touchdown, South Carolina. That is eight straight games with a touchdown catch for Mr. Rice. Unbelievable. Dave, you do basketball. You know what going up the ladder is? Watch Sidney Rice go up the ladder. This ball is thrown high. Good pressure. Hang in there. Look how high the ball is. And watch Rice just go up. Look how high he is. He goes up sky for the ball. Point after is up and good from Josh Brown, and the short field worked uh, extremely well for South Carolina. Gamecock strike first. Mitchell to Rice. We may be saying that quite a bit in the coming weeks. Back after word from your local stations. South Carolina offense averaging about 25 points a game, seventh in the conference. They haven't been scoring a ton, but just enough. Ryan Suckup will kick it off for South Carolina. 
the freshman out of Hickory, North Carolina. Back to return, Felix Jones and Darren McFadden. Jones averaging 29 yards per return. McFadden averaging 25 per return. As you look at Sidney Rice, who now has 12 touchdown receptions. How about this? The school record for a career, for a career, <laughs> is 19. Gosh. Set by Jermail Kelly and Robert Brooks. So, well on his way. Kick will sail down to McFadden at the three-yard line. McFadden to the 21, and he is dropped right there. So Arkansas will go at it one more time in their own territory. Our Suzuki walk-on way of life feature player this week is Mr. Stephen Parker, the 6'4", 315-pound junior. Has really brought him... Uh, Brought some uh, energy to that offensive line. A young man who uh, Houston Nutt couldn't speak more highly of last week said he's just really worked his tail off to become a starter, a hard worker, loves the weight room, has great quick feet, and has been a real pleasant surprise on that offensive line. So our walk-on way of life performer of the week. Yeah, when they say you're a blue collar, that means you work tough. Big hit at the line of scrimmage. Flag comes down as McFadden hit by Dustin Lindsay, the sophomore at a mobile. We'll wait on the call from Penn Wagers. Penn might be a little slow today. He had a huge steak for dinner last night. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Didn't eat it all either. <laughs> That's a clip, Dave, from the back side. That's along the line. On the offense, penalty will be half it to the goal. That remains first. And that is a new rule instituted this year for the protection of uh, those guys, big guys up front. Speaking of big guys up front, our Chevy defensive lineup for South Carolina goes like this. Stanley Doty, the nose tackle, really come on strong this year. Jordan Lindsay, one of the twins performing. His twin brother, Dustin Lindsay, will be the middle linebacker. Has 19 tackles in the last two games. And the secondary, of course, led by Coe Simpson, who has just been a one-man wrecking crew at times this year. Felix Jones in at tailback. Casey Dick will throw a little screen out here to Jones. Jones gets it back to the original line of scrimmage. Maybe a yard beyond after the 22, but a nice looking play and a good throw from Casey Dick. Lindsey gets his second tackle. Absolutely, this is a good call. You play a little, it's a little play fake action where you take the ball and you play fake and you come back and you just kind of hold it and slow down. Dump it to your back, give it to him in time. Look at that, good blocks up front. You see those linemen downfield, they love that. And that's a heads up play for, for uh, Casey Dick. Don't try to get it all back. Get a chunk of it back. Now it's second down. It's manageable. Second about eight or nine. Yeah, gain of 12 on that play. Here's Jones off the left side. White jersey surround him. He falls forward for maybe a yard. Coach Simpson and Lance Lorry converge for the stop. Well, we talk a lot about Coach Simpson on his defense with his pass, but I'll tell you this, watch him read this play. Watch number 10. Step up, you see he sees it's a backside run, square. Look at his shoulders, nice and square. Gets in there, form tackle. Hey, that's a heads up play. Coe leads this team in tackles with 68. A sixth in the conference at eight and a half tackles per game. There is John Thompson, co-defensive coordinator. Gave way to the play calling duties last week against Tennessee to Tyrone Nix, and that worked pretty well. And a timeout taken by Arkansas. And we will step aside as well at 5.40. Casey Dick looking at a third down and seven, and the ball sits on the Razorback 24-yard line. They burned a timeout to get this play set up. We'll see what it is. is incomplete looking for Cedric Washington and Arkansas will have to punt it away and not a good pass Dave in the ground that ball didn't have a chance of being caught I thought for sure he was going to go to Marcus Monk who was sitting in the in the uh, slot he ran him a little bit deeper tried to throw underneath but it was not a well-thrown ball <laughs> Jacob Skinner to punt for Arkansas. He had a big game two weeks ago against Georgia. Averaged 48 yards per punt. This is a good punt. Fair catch called for by Kenny McKinley. And South Carolina will set it up at the 24. A 51-yard punt with no return. That's pretty uh, picture perfect if you're Jacob Skinner. Well, Dave, Sidney Rice came to South Carolina as uh, the top receiver prospect in the state. He was redshirted last year after a knee injury early in the season, but he has quickly shown his skills, and he is setting and 
closing in on all kinds of records. He has already has a school record, 11 touchdown receptions for a freshman. He's caught a touchdown pass in eight straight games with this one on South Carolina's second drive of the season. And remember, he missed the opening game with a broken finger. There's Davis. He's bottled up, lost a yard. And so far today, Sidney Rice has a uh, couple of catches for 22 yards and that touchdown. And, you know, there are few players that garner this kind of attention from Steve Spurrier, but when we asked him about Sidney Rice, he says, guys, I've never coached anybody like him. I, I couldn't believe that. I mean, think you, about it. I think know, about Reed it. Anthony, I mean, you think of those guys that he's had down there in Florida. And he said, I've never coached anybody. He said, I told Arthur Blake, if he gets in trouble, just throw it in that direction and throw it high. New play that he's never done <laughs> yeah. before. New offense. Yeah. Second and 11. Pressure comes. Rice. A lot of red jerseys over there. Chris Houston on that coverage. Arkansas all over it. Freddie Fairchild put the pressure on Mitchell. Here's our Aaron scoreboard today. How about North Carolina oh, by three wow. over Boston College? Just can't figure the Star Hills out at all. And Texas early against Baylor. Longhorns missed the extra point. About the only thing that's gone wrong for them this year. Well, you know, I'm really impressed with the scheme that Arkansas has. I know they single covered on the touchdown throw, but uh, Sidney Rice is getting a lot of double coverage. You see the man in the slot right there. That's double coverage towards Rice. Swing it out to Davis, and he's got plenty of daylight. Davis to the 35, and that will be good enough for a first down by about a half a yard. Randy Kelly makes a stop. But, Dave, how does Davis get so open? Well, he comes out of the backfield. Then when you're rushing that hard, the end gets caught inside. Now, one of the things that the Arkansas coaches told us they were going to try to cover that little dump off to Davis with one of the defensive ends. That time, the defensive end got on the ground. Mike Davis was wide open, Dave. And you gotta credit Blake Mitchell too. I mean, what good vision. Looking downfield as wide outs, coming to his dump, to his back, to his wide receivers, to his uh, defense, offensive backs. Bobby Wallace in that tailback, he'll get the toss. Wallace, another true freshman. He can't run, outrun Marcus Harrison. How about that? Wow. 300 pound sophomore at a Little Rock from a defensive tackle position. Dave, he got out there and just tracked down Wallace. Watch this run down along the line. You're going to see it right there he is. Look at him running. He's running 300 pounds, as you said, Dave. That is speed. I want to tell you, I played defensive tackle. You want to have that lateral speed for about three or four yards, but he ran 20 yards. 25 tackles on the year for Mr. Harrison. He and Keith Jackson, the two defensive tackles, have combined for 66 stops on the year. Not much of a rush. Mitchell throws. Sidney Rice has it at the 42-yard line, and that'll be another Gamecock first down. John Johnson on the coverage. That'll be a gain of 12 on the play. Watch this route, Dave. He's number four right there. Watch him. Comes off. He comes inside. He's got to get downfield a little bit more. Now, break to the inside. I want to tell you, that's not bad coverage. 20, John Johnson, he's right running with him, but the ball is thrown well out in front of him, and he is so fluid when he runs. He doesn't look like he's throwing. He just, just doesn't look like he's running hard. Blake Mitchell, 7 out of 12. And off close to the 50-yard line, Bobby Wallace hit by Sam Olajibu, too. Sam, not a big man at 5'9". They say he's 5'9". I'm still <laughs> wondering if he's really 5'9". But Dave only offered a couple of scholarships coming out of high school because he was so small. Coaches didn't know where he could fit into the plan. And uh, Arkansas, Mississippi State, really the only other big-time program to offer him a scholarship. And he decided to come to Arkansas. We see teams, we saw Georgia run away from him because they had that much respect for him a couple weeks ago. Here's an auto lock down to three. Oh. High snap, loose football. And Blake Mitchell recovers it. Nearly a heads-up play by Arkansas's defense as Desmond Sims got back there and pushed Blake Mitchell out of the way, but he actually pushed Blake to the football. Push him for there, he is 23, pushes him, and look, he rolls right over oh. top on the ball. That's exactly what you want to do if you're a defensive end. And Steve Spurrier 
I mean, he knows that they are lucky to get that one back. Arkansas would have had great field position. David's now third and 39. Third long way. Buzz, what'd you see? Sidney Rice had one-on-one -on -one coverage at the bottom of the screen. He was signaling furiously at his quarterback. That's when that 95-mile-an-hour snap came flying back there. Here's a little draw. That goes to Wallace. He's hit by John Johnson. That was a long par five, and they took a two iron off the tee. <laughs> so they will punt it away now with 1.15 to go in the opening quarter. So South Carolina backpedal on that drive. Well, that, was a, that could have been a huge turnover, fortunately, for South Carolina. Blake Mitchell fell on that ball, but you don't want to give Arkansas momentum. You want them to have to come a long way. You've got a young quarterback, make them drive. And what it's going to do, barring a mishap, is Peyton Hill stands back at the 40-yard line is give the Razorbacks good field position. Fair catch called for at the 46-yard line. A 27-yard punt. Don't forget... Next week, we've got more football coming your way, and it'll be those Gamecocks, and you guessed it, the Florida Gators. That's right, November 12th, 1230 Eastern Time. Hope you can join us for that interesting showdown. You can log on to jpsports.com and click on the Regents Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. Well, Dave. Arkansas was able to flip the field, and now they yeah. start with decent field position at the 47-yard line. A.C. Dick to throw. Going deep. Has a man, Cedric Washington, knocked away at the last minute by Jonathan Joseph. That was, and how about the crowd? The crowd, they went deep. They haven't <laughs> done it all year. And the crowd loves the fact that they're throwing it long. Absolutely. We talk about having to have the threat of the pass. This is the threat. First down, lofted up there. Hey, you got a good shot of catching it. You had good position, inside position. It was a good defensive play. But I think you got to like it. Robert Johnson, he's saying, hey, I can do that. Just put me back in there. I'll throw that thing long if it gets that crowd that excited. Johnson was the starter throughout the first part of the season. Just not much of a threat in the passing game. And Coach uh, Houston Nutt decided he just needed to make a change. McFadden on the carry, brought down by Stanley Doty. And, Dave, you know, we talk about this team. Everybody knows Arkansas is going to rush it. And they're still putting up unbelievable numbers as a team. They are sixth in the country, first in the league, 256 a game. Imagine if they were a threat oh. throwing the football. Oh, if you didn't have that defense creeping up, and that's exactly what uh, what they have not had. They've had that defense creeping up on them because they haven't had the threat of a pass. They got it now. Still, as you say, they're still driving the ball, running it. Well, that'll be the end of the first quarter as South Carolina stops Arkansas on a fourth down and short at the 30-yard line. Got the ball back on their second possession and put it in the end zone. The Gamecocks and the Razorbacks from Fayetteville. Second quarter football. Arkansas trailing by a touchdown to start the second quarter on a gorgeous day for some Southeastern Conference football. Of course, South Carolina at 5-3, and 3-3 three, three and three in SEC play, still mathematically in it in terms of an SEC Eastern Division Championship. And, of course, a win today makes them bowl eligible while Arkansas trying to get on the board in the SEC. Dick swings it out to the near side. McFadden can't break through a couple of South Carolina defenders led by... Jonathan Joseph and Coe Simpson. Take a look at our Gatorade first quarter statistics and rushing yards, South Carolina, <laughs> minus four. Yeah. Doesn't surprise us too much. Of course, they lost a ton of that on a bad snap. And time of possession dominated by the Gamecocks. Over nine minutes in that yeah. first quarter. Almost ten, nine minutes and 50 seconds. That, uh, that uh, fourth down really cost them giving that ball back. Great field position. They capitalized on it. You got to you got to credit uh, South Carolina for that. So Jacob Skinner punted away. Good high kick. Boy, Skinner is punting it extremely well. That hits inside the five and sails into the end zone. So he's had a 51 yarder, and that one goes 50 yards. So it'll be first and ten for the Gamecocks at the 20 yard line. 
Dave, that first drive that South Carolina did on that fourth down, defense came out and stuck them. Now, when you get that, you can see John Thompson, defensive coordinator, he was excited. They started throwing the ball around. Rice made that nice catch to get out of bounds. And then they threw this one. You talk about going up for the ball. What that height advantage, that was fantastic. The Gamecocks will have it. They will work out of the traditional I formation. Sidney Rice to the near side. Take his turban as your tailback. Go get the handoff. Turman out over the 20, drives to the 25-yard line. Lachibutu with his second stop of the day. And Dacus Turman didn't practice much at all this week. It was a bad ankle. Didn't know if he would actually even get some action today. But they uh, apparently feel like he's good enough to go to line him up at tailback. Well, he did well on that play. Picked up almost five yards on the play. That's what you want. You want to get in that second down five, six yards at the max. Less is better, but it takes so much pressure off your quarterback because when you're second down and seven, second down and eight yards, it's a definite pass. And off, off the left side. Got a yard or two. Oh, I'll tell you, that was, that was a match right there. You talk come back in there he's going to run this way and then come back and watch this stick right in there boy when you get up in there that's Vaughn in there 31 and I mean that is a stick so that'll bring up a third down and three East Burrier said despite their rushing woes he's going to continue to run it they're pretty balanced about 52 percent passing 48 percent rushing this year now if you're Arkansas you want to put pressure you got to come after them they stay back and play the run and play it well and stop them short of the first down marker. That was Turman. He got tripped up by Marcus Harrison. Boy, you've got to get off those blocks. And 55, Marcus Harrison does just that. He hits into his man. He locks him up, 55. And you'll see Elijah Butu there, too, getting up there. You've got to keep separation. Now, Butu is, Elijah Butu, he's driven off the ball. But Mar Marcus Harrison got up in there. Dave made a great tackle to bring up that fourth down. Josh Brown back to punt for South Carolina. Peyton Hillis set to return, standing at his own 35-yard line. Hillis had a big fumble against Georgia two weeks ago that really was a backbreaker for the Gamecocks, or excuse me, for the Razorbacks. Fair catch called for and is taken in by Peyton Hillis at the 32-yard line. A 39-yard punt from Josh Brown. South Carolina in the second quarter, leading by a touchdown here in Fayetteville. 12.36 to go here in the second quarter. Gamecocks by seven over the Hogs. On first and ten, handoff goes to McFadden. Breaks a couple of tackles. Flag comes down right in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Right where you throw it for holding. When I saw Lambert, 51, getting up, he was just shaking his hand saying, yes, they caught him. That always happens on that back side of the play, Dave. That's that uh, defensive, uh, offensive tackle trying to reach. Holding. Number 89 on the offense. Penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the flag. Down the main first. It's Wes Murphy who's been bothered by some injuries this year. Bad ankle. Old groin. Now he's uh, whistled for a hold. Oh, there's a hold right there. Look at that. That's the hold. My goodness. He takes him to the ground. Horace Lambert Gosh. couldn't do anything. <laughs> I wonder Lambert got up and said yes. Heck, I could have called that one. But now it's first and 20. Arkansas hadn't caught a break in terms of uh, having a short field or a, a good offensive play calling down, a second and short. Here's McFadden with him. Maybe you don't need it to the 35. Horace Lambert hanging on for dear life. I want to tell you, if Lambert doesn't get him, he's gone. You talk about fast into the hole. Watch him. Quick into the hole now. Dart and go. And he just takes off right there. If he doesn't get him, he's gone. what he's done against yep. the Georgia Bulldogs at 190 and he's going to add some here to midfield. 
Brett Bennett runs him out of bounds, but he is oh so close to taking it to the house every time he touches it. Well, Dave, you don't think of a big man getting outside like this, but McFadden gets to the outside. Look at that stride. Then now when he turns it up, I want to tell you something. He is gathering yards because he just explodes. He, he raises blocks really well, sets him up, and comes off that ball. I want to tell you something. We're going to be hearing a lot about him for a long time. John Thompson knows the same thing. First first down of the game for the Razorbacks after the 13-yard pickup. Here goes McFadden. He's hurtling some folks, trying to stiff arm, but the Gamecocks all over it. Dustin Lindsay, along with Brandon Isaac, converge for the stop. Boy, now that was close to a face mask. Watch the, watch the hands of Isaac go up into the face. Right there, he makes a decision to go outside. Not a good decision because you see him coming up. You see the hands. He had him around the neck. That's Brandon Isaac. Had him up around the neck. Did not have the face mask. Crowd thought he did, but uh, our look clearly showed him. He's around the neck, not around the face mask. Isaac with 31 tackles from the safety position. Darius Howard on senior day. The senior getting a look at tailback on a second down and long, second and 14. The play action, Casey did. Miscommunication with his receiver, Marcus Monk. If nothing else, we had a chance to yeah. see a good arm. Yeah. Well, what happened is Monk uh, did a curl of the inside at about 12 to 15 yards, and that ball was thrown out. And you saw when Monk did his hands, he did that little hand that that was an, audible, uh, an audible called on the line. He just read it wrong. And I would tend to believe that uh, Casey Dick read it wrong more so than uh, Marcus Monk. But I'd go right back to him if I'm Houston Nutt. Go right back to him. He's your home run hitter. Go to him. You need 15 yards. Go back. Out of the shotgun on third and 14. No pressure. Big steps up. Fires. Pass is caught. First down to Cedric Washington. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage. And Casey Dick getting a little fired up here in front of 70,000 fans again at 21. Look at that protection up there. They only elected to run three. Gave him great time to sit back there. He came off his primary receiver, looked downfield, and he found Washington in that little curl area at about 18 yards. Beautiful strike. Nice ball. Good trajectory. That's down. That'll boost up your confidence if you're a quarterback. This time last year, Dick was playing high school football. McFadden Tripped up by Coach Simpson, who just blew up the block of Brandon Kennedy and then blew up McFadden for a loss of a couple. Boy, number 10, Simpson comes up, and I mean he takes the fullback on and makes a pile. Watch right in here. Boom, right there. He makes that big old pile right there, and there's nowhere to go. That's the way you play safety. There is Tyrone Nix making the play calls for that South Carolina defense. The co-defensive coordinator came over from Southern Miss, where he actually... Uh, had been around. His co-defensive coordinator, John Thompson, in previous years. Look at McFadden go, Dave. I mean, feet never stop. Morris Lambert with the tackle. Absolutely. That's exactly what he does so well, Dave. You pointed out his feet. His feet are, we call them happy feet. It's not long strides. You're just kind of happy feet in there. They're down. They're, they're dancing. They're trying to get the acceleration. McFadden does the good, and that time he got a good block there by Brandon Kennedy, the fullback who got wiped out the play before. Here's a third down and six. Big down. I almost think you're in four down territory. A swing pass to McFadden. He's got some blocks. He's got some running room. First down. Inside the 25 to the 24. Coach Simpson on the tackle. Boy, good block there. Number 63, the left guard. Luigi, watch him get out here. 63 is going to come out here. Now look, you're looking downfield right there. That's the block. Boom, kick him out. Look at this play selection on this uh, guess quarter and a half. 11 rushes, eight passes. It's been so dominant rushing. Yeah, absolutely. The fact that they're this close says that maybe uh, Houston up is going to open it up today. Well, I think they're getting a little bit more confidence in their quarterback, too. McFadden around the corner to the 10. Knocked down at the five-yard line by Fred Bennett. 
who saved a sure touchdown from the sensational freshman Darren McFadden, a gain of 20. Boy, and you gotta you gotta thank your blocking backs. You see Willa Hillis there, number 22. He occupies, but when McFadden gets around that corner, and look at him just protect that ball. Again, get to the outside. Look at this acceleration right there. He sees his crack and look at those, look at that stride starting to lengthen out. When he goes to get hit, puts both arms on the ball, protects it well. I want to tell you something, that's the most exciting freshman I've seen in a long while. And a close second is the guy in a tailback right now, Felix Jones. Oh, yeah. Timeout taken by Arkansas. 8.03 to go in the second quarter. The Razorbacks knocking on the door. Back after a word. South Carolina 7, Arkansas nothing. Razorbacks knocking on the door. Formation, Felix Jones, or excuse me, Darius Howard is your tailback. Casey Dick rolls out, Hillis wide open, touchdown Arkansas! Peyton <laughs> Hillis with his second touchdown reception of the season and Casey Dick's first career touchdown pass. Well, it's play fake action this way, bring Hillis out of the backfield and he comes wide open. You think, you look at there, you think Casey Dick's not excited? He should be. That was a great play selection. Everything was reading to the left, brought him back out of the backfield. Balsero to attempt the point after. It is up and it is good. So a nice 10 play drive from Arkansas. A drive that started back at their 32 yard line, covered 68 yards, actually 11 plays, 68 yards. Casey Dick now six out of uh, nine for 47 yards, one touchdown. And we are tied at seven. Dave, what I really like about him is he's calm now. All of a sudden, all those jitters, they're all gone. He's just calming down, playing his football. Again, you see play fake action there now. Just coming right around, looks for uh, Hillis out there, finds him out in the flat, delivers the ball well. Casey Dick uh, now in a small group of quarterbacks that would start as true freshmen. And actually, Casey Dick, the only one to actually start his first game he's ever played, his first snap ever taken is as a starting quarterback, as a true freshman. You see Houston up back in 1976, also a true freshman that got a start as just a youngster. Three games that year. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Yeah, Dave, you talked about that Houston Nuts start. He told us yesterday he could remember it like it was yesterday. 32-0 win over TCU. Didn't know until right before the game when he said the legendary Frank Rose came down and spoke to the team and said, okay, boys, we're going to have a new quarterback today. He's had a lot of success, so y'all give him some help. <laughs> uh, yeah. Casey Dick got a little more in the morning than that <laughs> earlier this week, but uh, certainly Darren McFadden's given him some help. And Houston Nuts said he was looking for his quarterback to make four or five plays a game. Well, Dick did that on that drive alone. Yeah, good drive for Casey Dick. Very confident. Kicked off by Jonathan Joseph out to the 24-yard line. That was a solid drive, uh, especially after what we saw the first couple of possessions for Arkansas. We didn't see much, but 11 plays, 10 plays, 68 yards. Time, 4 minutes and 39 seconds, and that successful drive means another $500 to the SEC's Education Initiative, courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO, and you, too, can be a successful driver. It's going to be interesting right now to see how Arkansas's defense responds. They've, they've had a long time to sit over on the sideline. They watched their offense drive the ball. They watched them pass it. Now, do they have a spark, or does Carolina take it back out of them? McKinley on a little reverse. Arkansas stays with it. And that reverse lost three yards. Desmond Sims led the charge from his defensive end position. You talk about attracting the crowd. That was attracting the crowd. Reverse all the way back around. Look at the number of red shirts. One touch him. Two, three, four, five. Here comes the crowd. Look at the number of red shirts in on that jack. Desmond Sims, a former linebacker that they have uh, moved to the defensive end position this year. Brings a lot of speed. Not much size, 6'3", about 225. Just a junior. Second down and 13 now. 
Mitchell going past batted in the air, nearly picked off. Boy, it hung in the air, and Michael Grant almost got his hands on it. Looking for Noah Whiteside. Randy Kelly also in on the coverage. Boy, that ball hit right in the hands. Watch this play. Michael Grant and uh, Kelly are over there. I, oh, goodness gracious, that hit Randy Kelly right in the face mask. Third and 13 with 6.55 to go in the second quarter. Boy, now does Arkansas bring pressure? You know that Blake Mitchell's going to look for that underneath. He may look back there, see if he can find Sidney Rice for that first down. Do you bring pressure? Do you stay back and drop? Mitchell has time. Pass is intercepted at the 23-yard line. Key checks. Jamal Anderson checked that with the touchdown. Jamal Anderson with the interception return for a touchdown. 24 yards, but a flag is down at the 35. Oh, and Houston Nutt is going to be besides himself holding, and it's going to be against Arkansas. Buzz, did you get a good look? Dave, receiver and a DB locked up in the backfield. I mean, it had to happen 10 yards behind the play. Now, now, in deference to the official, the back judge, I don't think, During saw that the ball was pass, picked. Holding number six on the defense. Penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. But, I mean, a great play up front, Dave, and the, and the penalty happened way away from the play. That's the reason Houston not so upset. Well, Dave, one of the schemes that they told us that they were going to try to use was use those defensive linemen to pick up the backs. Look, 92. See 92 right there? That's the lower left-hand corner. Oh, yeah. The flag comes in. There was right there. That was right. Yeah. There is uh, the flag on Randy Kelly. We caught the very tail end of it. And that is where the uh, violation occurred. Boy, what a break for South Carolina. Swing it around to Mike Davis. Davis out to the 32-yard line. Wow. You go from six points to keeping a drive alive. It was third down. Now it's second down and about seven. Yeah, and the fans are still reacting. So is Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator. That was a great play. The scheme worked. They were underneath. They had great coverage. They turn a turnover into seven points, and they have to give it back because of a hold. Wow. That is That's the kind of year it's been. Yeah, you're right. Now, if you're Blake Mitchell, can you capitalize on it? Mitchell will fire the slant. Sidney Rice breaks a tackle to the 45. Out near midfield, wrestled down at the 49-yard line. Michael Coe and Pierre Brown on the stop. But you see the strength Rice brings, 6'4". They list him at only 190, Dave, but he can he can certainly break some tackles, gain a 15. Absolutely. Look at this little dart inside. Now, get the ball. He's got separation, plants there, and he accelerates. Boy, if they didn't have their strong safety, if they didn't have Vaughn, 31, coming over, Sidney Rice was off to the races. He's big. As you say, Dave, he's strong, he's fluid, and he will go up for the ball. He's got everything you want in a wide receiver. Now he's at the top of the screen, way up top. Four catches for 51 yards for Sidney Rice. This time he'll keep it on the ground. Here's Mike Davis to the 25, to the 20, and dragged out of bounds by Mikel Vaughn. But a huge gain by South Carolina on the ground. A gain of 37. Well, they're running over in the Sean Goddard, number 70. And he gets a good block. He's right there. He comes down right there and gets that inside block. And then they just, they burst through there. Just, man, there was a hole there. You got to follow the big man. Goddard's about 6'5", about 300 pounds. Number 70 crushes down inside. Now explosion, speed. And all of a sudden, South Carolina's found a running game. Mike Davis today, six carries, 64 yards. Dacus Turbin, Dacus Turbin in at tailback. Look at the handoff. Turbin close to the 11-yard line. Marcus Harrison makes the stop. All told today, rushing the football now. South Carolina with 38 yards, and that's deceiving. I, I, we have to go back and remember yeah. they lost uh, 29 yards on a bad on a bad snap. Look at the red zone of Arkansas defensively this year. They have given up 19 touchdowns and 31 
red zone opportunities and that red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. When you start thinking about this drive, you think about that turnover and then that penalty. Wow! And South Carolina doing exactly what they need to do. Capitalize. Mitchell looking for Rice. Double covered in the corner of the end zone. Randy Kelly and Shedrick Johnson on the coverage. It looked as though Kelly might have got his hands on the football. Boy, good coverage. We talked about this. They were going to shade and look for Sidney Rice all the time. You see the coverage going back over there. Too many attracts the crowd inside, outside coverage. Don't just run with them. Make it a difficult pattern. Well, that's two of those that Randy Kelly has had his hands on today. That yeah. Love, love, love to have those back. Speaking of hands, it looks as though Blake Mitchell's uh, shaking off some kind of pain on that left hand. Third down. Mitchell under pressure. Drop at the 25. Keith Jackson led the charge. Pressure came from Marcus Harrison, and he ran him right into Keith Jackson. Well, Harrison never quit. 55 never quit on the play, Dave. He just kept on digging and digging and digging, and that's what you have to do as a defensive lineman. He's not going to get credit. 55 is not, but he gets the quarterback out of the pocket. Now, right there, you see now he moves him out. Then Keith Jackson comes over, makes the tackle. That's team defense. Second sack of the year for Keith Jackson. Long field goal. 31 is where they will spot it. So a 41-yarder with some wind. And that is pulled wide left. So Josh Brown was the hero last, folks. It has been, this is a classic fall day here in the Ozark. The, I'm not much into fall foliage, but it <laughs> takes your socks away when, uh, when you come here, folks. You just have to see it to believe it. It's Arkansas. Hands it off to Felix Jones. It's a couple on the play brought down by Oris Lambert. You see some of those mm. pictures. I mean, there's a cloud in the sky. I couldn't believe it. I saw the sky. There's our purple pill brought to you by Nexium. Got to get to the front edge of that purple pill for the first down. Jones is going to do that and then some. Felix Jones dragged down at the 45 by Coach Simpson. And as we said, Dave, Felix Jones is a guy that's probably a little bit under the spotlight because of McFadden, but if it wasn't for Darren, he'd be the hero. Absolutely. Reads his block well, then get to the outside. Got a good block up front by Kyle Roper, the center. And what again, do you like about him? Oh, man. I'll tell you what I like. Reads his block. See that block right there? He reads his block. Now, you see that little crease, you accelerate. I'll tell you one thing. These two... Jones what's the McFadden. difference? What's the difference between the two? Well, uh, maybe a little bit of size. McFadden may be a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger. He may be even a little bit faster. McFadden does, but uh, I think Felix Jones is more the slasher in the hole. He sees that little seam and darts through it. He's a littler guy, quicker feet maybe. <laughs> yeah, now you, you take out Felix Jones and they're going, oh no, on defense they're bringing back in McFadden. Almost eight yards per rush for Darren McFadden and Jones right behind him. A little over seven. These two have combined for well over a thousand yards this year. And they are the future of Arkansas tailbacks. McFadden down to the 41 yard line. That'll be a first down. Tremaine Tyler with the tackle and after a couple of drives that didn't see the Hogs pick up a first down, they have started to rack up some of these first downs. That is number five, actually six now, for the Hawks. Well, you can control a game, and Houston Nutt will be the first one to tell you, you can control the game. You, if you want to keep South Carolina's offense off the ball, you control the ball by running it, and that's what he's trying to do. Right Just run, 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 eat up the clock. Don't give uh, South Carolina opportunities. Casey Dick to throw. Passes high. Fell in, completed the 20-yard line. Got away from him, looking for Marcus Monk. One fifty-one to go here in the second quarter as Auburn and Kentucky are locked up at seven in the second wow. quarter in Lexington. That's surprising. My, oh, my. And Texas, 13-0 better than Baylor. That also in the second. 
Big down here. Second down and ten. Don't make a mistake. You won't if you give it to one of those running backs. Not much happening on that carry by Felix Jones. Gets a couple of yards. That'll bring up a third down and we'll say seven. Had a chance to talk to Houston about his sheet you see in his left hand, his play calling sheet. He was breaking it down for me, showing me how it's doing. He says this week he's gone to the number system and they've got the armband for Casey Dick. He said he's normally he doesn't do that, but with a true freshman, decided to make it as simple as possible. And there is the number system. So he just says, run number eight. And Casey Dick looks down and looks for number eight. So let's, this might be number eight. Who knows? I like that. I like get a free play. And he's going to swing it out to McFadden. McFadden has some room. McFadden might take it to the house. Knocked out of bounds at the one, but a flag is down, and that was a free play that worked extremely well. A gain of 36 on the swing pass. Well, how about Casey Dick using the hard count? Coming out there, changing the snap count, offside. and he brings uh, Dudley offside. Number 55, 55 jumps in there. Free play. Now, don't quit. Give it to him. And who do you give it to? A guy who runs through tackles. Darren McFadden, as you said, take it to the house. Ooh, that's close to getting that ball over the end zone. Watch the jump right there. Oh, that's the jump. Good hard count. Now just dump it to him. It's a lateral behind the line. Man, McFadden. He just... yeah, I, I think he got that ball over the end zone before he got knocked out of bounds. I really believe that. Yeah, I thought so too. When he held it out there and he carried it in, Dave. Regardless, it's first and goal under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Hillis in motion out of the eye formation. The area's Howard hit at the line of scrimmage, and he might have lost a yard. Lance Loy from his linebacker spot makes the stop. Well, one thing the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, Tyrone Dix, the co-defensive coordinator, told us, he said, we're going to play basic fundamentals. That's what this is. Fundamentals. Arkansas with only one timeout remaining as the clock ticks to 34 seconds. They want to save that timeout in case they don't get it in and they have to get a field goal, get their team set up. Absolutely. 34 seconds doesn't sound like a lot of time, but it's a lot of plays. Here's McFadden off the left side. He stopped at the one, and now this will be a timeout with 15. Actually, it stops at 16 seconds. Boy, that's a surprising call. I know you got a lot of confidence in your run game, but hey. We'll see what uh, they have in store after we look at these messages from Arkansas and South Carolina. South Carolina 7, Arkansas 7, 16 seconds to go. Hogs out of timeouts. It is third down and goal from the two. And, you know, it's one of those things where you really don't want to run it. It is third down, so you can't come up to the, if you, if you throw it and don't get in the end zone, or, excuse me, rush it and don't get it in the end zone. You don't have that timeout to burn, and you can't obviously ground it. It'll be fourth down, so. Got to pass it. Got to throw it in this situation. Got to throw it in the end zone, obviously, when you're on the two-yard line. But if the quarterback starts to scramble, he better make it, or time's going to run out. Little play action, trying to pass they used earlier. Back in the end zone, it's incomplete, looking for Jared Hicks with 10 seconds remaining. And here comes the field goal unit. Boy, I thought for a minute there, Jonathan Joseph, number nine, was going to see this. Joseph's in the right of your screen. Look at him looking at the quarterback. See him right there? He's going over it. Oh, man, he almost gets that ball. Good play by him. Heads up play, looking at the quarterback. Balsero for nine, from 19 yards out. He's 19 out of 23 in his career inside of 40 yards. Snap is good. Spot is good. And the kick is just as good. So Arkansas will take the three. They wanted the seven. And I still believe that he might have gotten that ball across the end line, the goal line, before he was knocked out. But regardless, it is now a 10-7 Arkansas lead with three seconds to go before intermission. Well, I think you have a valid point, Dave, on that, whether he whether he went in the end zone or not. But maybe we can take a look at it a little bit later. We'll vote for the toughest play of the week and a chance to win a brand new Polaris ATV in the Polaris Tough Play of the Week contest. Visit PolarisToughPlays.com and watch clips of this week's toughest plays. Vote for your favorite and enter to win. McFadden on that big play, the 30-yarder that, that we've been talking about, uh, that 
looks like he might have gotten it in there. First of all, they consider that a rush because the pass was behind. Yeah. But watch how he holds the ball out right there. Look, see right there? See how he holds the ball out? He breaks the plate. But I'll tell you what I thought. I thought his right foot may have touched on the line. That's what I thought. He was bumped. He was going out. Yeah. No doubt the ball broke the plane. But the minute he touched out of bounds. Well, I will say that we couldn't exactly get a real good look at that right foot. And so seeing how that we are probably, by my estimation, 300 yards away from the corner <laughs> yeah. of that end zone. And our official is standing about three inches away from but I'm going to go and lean his way. Yeah, you see that official? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that official yeah. standing right there. <laughs> and after seeing how big some of those guys were last night. They I can eat. They can eat. Now. Like that, that, our crew can eat some food. <laughs> we put away some grill. That kick. A line drive. Picked up at the 30-yard uh, line by Charles Silas, the defensive end. And that'll be the end of the first half. So South Carolina strikes first to lead 7 to nothing, but the Hogs have answered with 10 points, three right before the intermission. Dave Baker down try, trying to catch with Kubo. In, in this game, he is a yeah. veteran, but uh, just a sophomore. We look at the comparisons. Dave, what do you take from each guy? Well, I take good quarterback comparisons. I mean, Casey Dick came in this game, no stats. And Blake Mitchell's really had the confidence. Blake Mitchell, they took away that underneath game. He's going to have to change and go a little bit deeper. But for Casey Dick, they have to be excited about his first half of football. Well, South Carolina won the uh, initial coin toss and decided to receive to open the game. So Arkansas has it here to start the second half. In a big game for the Gamecocks. And really, Arkansas, I mean, they got to win out if they want to go to a bowl game. Absolutely. And not an easy road by any stretch of the imagination. But they think they can do it. If you should not, you think they can do anything. Yeah. That kickoff sails through the end zone. The Hogs will take over at the 20. Look at the possessions in the first half for this Arkansas team. It did not get off to a good start. They just couldn't uh, crack that South Carolina defense. They gave it up on downs, resulted in a South Carolina touchdown and a couple of punts along the way. Yeah, but look at the number of plays, Dave. The last two, they got that running game going. They had a really nice 11-play drive, and then they had that second one that led to the field goal. So as Houston Nutt said, I think they've got the running game going. And that's what they did against Georgia two weeks ago in Athens in their last outing. They kept the uh, football and the time of possession. McFadden with a first down carry. He's up over 100 yards again. You want to <laughs> oh, talk about close. Watch number five. Take this hand off. Good block out there. Parker, good block right there. Good seal to the inside. Look at that. If he gets by right there. Oh, man. Oh, man. Watch this real time. That is now four consecutive games over 100 yards for Darren McFadden, and he adds to those totals. McFadden to the 39. He steps out of bounds. That'll be a gain of seven. Tremaine Tyler with the stop defensively. I just, you know, you go across the board with this Darren McFadden, and we've seen him. This is our third time, and Dave, I just, I mean, he leads the SEC uh, in rushing touchdowns. 190 yards versus Georgia, which is an Arkansas freshman record. You look at some of the other games that he's had, a huge game against Auburn with 108, 125 versus Louisiana Monroe, and now he's up to 106 here on 14 carries. I mean, the list of numbers just blow you away. McFadden with another first down carry to the 46. And Dave, one comment about, look who he ran against. Alabama and Georgia, two top five teams. I mean, we're not talking about the also rans of this league or, or of, uh, of the Southeast or somewhere. We're talking about top teams, top five teams. Coming into this game, McFadden has had a couple of long runs, a couple of 70-yarders. Jones had an 80-yard run. Uh, Darius Howard had a 60-yard run. Peyton Hillis has been over 30 yards on the ground. Their longest pass play coming into today, 29-yarder. They're not going to change as long as they're picking up four or five yards at a burst. There's another. Oh, man. He fell forward. McFadden did for a couple of extra yards, and that'll bring up a second down and three or four. And these are the downs that Houston Nutt loves. Oh, these are tone downs, they call them. Right now, you're setting the tone. Big man on big man. You're blowing them off on the line. You got your fullback ripping up through there, getting yardage. Hey, and how about that front line? You know, we talk a lot about them. We talked a lot about Ropers, the only senior, Parker, Hugo. I mean, they are a solid line up front. Off 
the left side goes Felix Jones. So you carry McFadden four or five times, wear you down. Then you come in with the fresh legs of Felix Jones, who picks up another first down. Mintz has all been on the ground to start this second half. Absolutely. And if you're a defensive back and you're coming up, you're seeing a red wave. And you're trying to get low so you don't get knocked over. But uh, you're right. When McFadden gets tired in that Georgia game, what do you have, 30 carries or more? 31 carries against the Bulldogs that was for incredible. 190 yards. Here's Jones. He's hit at the 40. Dustin Lindsey. Marvin Sapp on the tackle for the Gamecocks. This defense, uh, they're starting to add up quite a few plays defensively. Yeah, absolutely. And I can tell you, I've been in that type of a defensive huddle. You need somebody in there to turn around and say, hey, step up. Somebody to get a big get a big play. Shoot through, dart through, get some uh, confusion in the backfield, but you got to stop it. Tyrone Nix calling the plays for the Gamecock defense. And he knew what he was going up against. He said, these are great running back. This is a great running game. We've got a real challenge. Flag down as McFadden takes the handoff. Stiff arm and drag down a face mask on Tremaine Tyler. It was about the only way he could have grabbed him and stopped him at the 35. Boy. You know, you last week, Dave, McFadden did that. I believe it was McFadden at Georgia. Exactly, he right. Got tied up with one of the Georgia secondary guys, and he grabbed as much face mask as anybody, but the penalty went against the defense. Well, sometimes the face mask, and in this situation, it's going to be the major one, I believe. But this may be a good face mask, because let me tell you, there was nobody else out there. If McFadden gets around that corner, he is gone. Little slide to the right now. Pick up the blocks. Look at this cut inside. And right here, you don't see anybody up in there for Upside on the defense, that penalty declined. Five yard face mask on the defense will be added to the end of the run. You know, that, that wasn't a huge face mask. Yeah, you're right. I, I, make, I made a mistake. Let's give some credit there. This was not the blatant face mask. You see it up on the face mask. That's five, but he doesn't use it to tackle. Buzz. Oh, it was that stiff arm. The stiff arm is kind of like a lost art. It was an effective weapon back when Roe was playing, and they had no face mask. <laughs> but, I mean, McFadden, I mean, he is a powerful guy. And this is, a, you're right, it's the second or third time we've seen him knock down a defensive guy. That's why Dave Roe looks the way he does, Buss. Oh, I'll tell you, that face, <laughs> face made for radio. Thanks, guys. I love you guys. Love you guys. McFadden inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. That'll be second down and about eight, but... Already three minutes taken off the clock with this drive. The Adrian Coley with the tackle for the Gamecocks. Here's John Thompson. Yep. Of course, he am, uh, amongst uh, good company when it comes to returning home. Dave Womack, who handles the secondary for the Gamecocks. Last year's defensive coordinator, Madre Hill. Uh, former great running back here at Arkansas. Oh, now man. coaches the running backs for Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. So all those guys. Uh, coming back to a place they uh, spent a lot of time at. Big down here. Second down, eight. If you're South Carolina, you've got to get penetration. you got to come up with a play. Put him in third and eight. Oh, right, Mason Dick to throw. Hillis is wide open, and then he trips at the 25. Peyton Hillis leads this team in receptions. Coming into the, to today, he had 25 on the year. Nice drag out of the backfield, number 22 out in the flat. You're right. When he turned around right here, oh, he stumbled just before he caught the ball. And look at Coach Simpson. Oh, look at there, little Nick right there. <laughs> Coach Simpson was on that uh, was on that coverage. He got bumped off. Cedric Washington, the wide receiver, the man that uh, bumped Coach Simpson. There's Peyton Hills with a couple of grabs today, but that could have gone for a few more yards on third down. Arkansas will run it, and South Carolina snuffed it out. Tremaine Tyler with a big stop, and that'll bring up fourth down as Arkansas lost a yard or two. This is what South Carolina needed to do. They had to get penetration, and they did. They got up in the backfield. Tremaine Tyler, 23, he gets up in there, and they got to be excited. That's what you need. You need somebody to stand up. Well, I asked Houston Nutt yesterday, Dave, how far would he go with Chris Balsero in terms of a field goal, and he says, I tell you what, 30's about as far as, out as I would go in terms of ball possession, unless it's windy. Well, we yes. got more than enough wind today, so he's going to go for it on fourth down. And the wind is in his face, so that would even make it more difficult. 
Over the middle, passes, batted in the air, off the helmet, and dropped as two Gamecocks collided. Jordan Lindsay had the easy interception, but it was Terrell Davis. Boy, that knocked ball. it away from him, but ultimately they probably they might have lost five yards had they picked it off. That ball went way high, right off the front face mask of number 41, Lindsey. Right off the face mask there. Oh, Lindsey comes down with it. Excuse me. They're the ones that pumped into it. But, Dave, they, yeah. they'll get the ball back yeah. at the 26. That interception would have occurred at about the inside the 20, so. Yeah. They actually gained a few yards on that, but look at possessions for South Carolina. A short field resulted in a touchdown, but not a whole lot since. Now those punt, punt, punts. That's been tough on them, but I think Blake Mitchell will come out here. I think he's got a little bit more time to relax. No, didn't have a whole lot of no, time on that. No, he didn't. Pressure came from both Keith Jackson and Jamal Anderson, forcing a errant throw from Mitchell. You'll see the left of your screen, you're going to see the pressure number 92 is Anderson. He comes around the horn. You see 99 coming on him. That's Keith Jackson. Now, what you want to do is you've got to step up in that pocket. You've got to step forward. Let them run them around to the backside. Right here, big man. Four man front for the Hogs. And their base 4 three package. Pump fix. Keeps it and is dropped at the 25. Did they say he fumbled it? No. Down. Down at the 25. It'll be third down. Dave, you remember we talked about that defensive scheme cutting off that underneath pass because they knew Blake Mitchell threw it so much. This is exactly what it was going to be. Close coverage right there. You see, he can't throw it. He has to bring it down. Look at the number of red jerseys all around there. They have they just surrounded McKinley number 11. Now that ball is out. But I think the knee was down as what well. and that what they call let's watch that again. Where's the knee? Let's see if we see it. Knee's down. Yep. Ooh, that's close. Knee was down. Yep. Knee was down. Steve Spurrier wants a timeout. On third and eleven, after a timeout by Steve Spurrier. The game Cox will throw. Mitchell over the middle, passes short, looking for Antonio Hefner. The backup quarterback who actually got a start against Auburn earlier this year moved to wide receiver this week. That was his first chance for a catch, but an errant throw. Boy, not a good series for South Carolina. They didn't want to come in and just go three and out. You've got to control that ball. You want to move the chains, and they just weren't able to do it. You have to credit. On the other side of the ball, you have to credit Richie Herring and his defense. They stopped them. They had that underneath cover. They cut took away that little pass, and now they're going to get the ball back. Peyton Hillis averaging about 10 yards per punt return. Back to receive the Josh Brown kick. A long end over end kick that Hillis lets bounce at the 25 and then it will roll down to the 11 yard line. If you're South Carolina, you got to be a big fan of that Josh Brown punt that traveled 64 yards. Next week, the Gators and the Gamecocks from Columbia, South Carolina. It has been perhaps the hottest ticket in Columbia in quite some time, and you know the reasons why. Steve Spurrier facing his old team, 12.30 Eastern time right here on JP Sports. And you can log on to jpsports.com and click on the Regents Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. And Buzz, down on, down on that field, how, how bad is that wind on the field? I see these flags up top. Is it an impact in the passing game? Right here with you. Hey, uh, being a golfer like you are, Dave, you heard John Daly during the pregame show. He had it pegged at 28. I mean, it is really bad. It's coming uh, across the field, kind of toward the press box as you look at it. If you look at the flags, I talked to Chris Balasera before the game. I said, which flags do you look at? Because if you look across the field, the flags are blowing to your left. Up right. behind you, they're blowing the opposite right. direction. And, uh, I mean, it is about a 30-mile-an-hour wind. Balacero told me a little while ago, I talked to him when he came back on the half, he said if he had the wind that he could hit from 65, it is that big wow. a wind down here. You see stuff blowing across the field, and it's really affecting anything in the passing game over about uh, five yards or so. Interesting. That's, that's kind of what I saw. I've seen some balls that look like they should have been... Uh, easy throws that have gotten away today and I was curious so uh, obviously that is something to take into account today.
Macy Dick, no problem on that throw as he hits Hillis, who slips down at the 15, picks up about three on the play, and that'll bring up third down. Yeah, Dave, and that wind affects you differently. When you're throwing with the wind, the ball has a tendency to float, and it goes high. We saw that evidence down there on that last series. When you're throwing, when you got the wind behind you, or I should say in your face, then it starts to dive. It's going down at your feet, so it's tough to come up with uh, the proper pass. You can't pass more than 15 yards in a series like in a situation like this with the wind this much. 15 yards maximum. On third and six, tied in Mason Timbleton in motion. Casey Dick will throw it. He will go about 15 yards, and it's complete to Marcus Monk. First down. Tremaine Tyler on the stop. Well, first of all, the first thing Casey Dick does is get back. He's got pressure on him, but he gets back and relies on that offensive line. Look at that offensive line. Bundle him, bundle him, bundle him. Then he throws the strike. Late pressure. But Monk coming across. He's a big target. We talked about how size he has. That ball, I thought, got tipped right there. That was close to being intercepted. But Monk, good concentration, look at him. And he had a bounce to his step this week. He said, you know, I'm excited to see a new quarterback. He's going to throw it. McFadden on the carry, brought down by Hurley. Hurley was the man who tipped that last pass for South Carolina. Marcus Monk back on the field along with... Cedric Washington, but Monk has been very quiet the last three games, and he is, you know, while Coach Nutt has put a positive spin on it, certainly you know Marcus oh. Monk's the kind of guy that's been frustrated. Yeah, oh, he's got to be. He's got to be. But he really likes, I asked him about Casey Dick. I said, well, how do you like him? He said, I'm just trying to calm him down. I told him, it's just like high school. There's just a whole lot more people <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about a little flea flicker action? Up in the air, the ball's just sailing, and it is incomplete. John, uh, Jonathan Joseph tried to get at least one foot in bounds, and it didn't work. So an incomplete pass, but Dave, the ball just hung up in the air. Yeah, it didn't fool anybody. Flea Flicker back. Nobody bit on it. You've got to have them bite on it. They didn't bite, and he just threw it up for grabs. I'll tell you one thing. This is a mistake, but he was able to escape it. Now watch this right here. Johnson, Jonathan Joseph has the ball. Nope, foot's out of bound. When he has control of the ball, foot is on the line. Good call by the official. He almost ran into Tracy Rocker, former... Uh, oh, you wouldn't want to run into him. Auburn All-American defensive lineman in the College Football Hall of Fame. He's going about three over 300 right now. He delayed Jonathan Joseph <laughs> just by standing there. Speaking of laying out, here comes Terrell Davis in his first career start, taking Casey Dick to the ground, and that is a big sack for the South Carolina defense. And you have to credit South Carolina. They just said, hey, you're not going to sit back there and just come after us. Sit back there and pitch. And they get Davis in there, number 30. He comes rolling in there. They also had, they had two pressures there. Walker was in there. And look at them. They're excited. They got a good stop. They should get good field position, maybe midfield. Tyrone Mix making a nice call from a defensive coordinator standpoint. Brought the heat. Yeah. A loss of about 10 on that sack by Terrell Davis. McKinley back to return the punt of Jacob Skinner. It's a high kick. It'll be a fair catch by McKinley. He does so at the 35-yard line. So, 41-yard punt gives South Carolina a pretty good field position here in the third quarter. Gamecocks need it. They're down three on the road. Great day for football. Also not a bad day to be outside. Maybe play a little cards. Well, we found a group of folks who got a big grill, a card table, and some cards. And it looks like they have actually a little view from the uh, angle. They are way up on a hill, so they can actually see into the ballpark. They've got it all worked out. Buzz will probably join them in a <laughs> <Yeah>. few minutes. <laughs> so out of the eye formation on first down and 10 from the 35. Here's a little play fake. Reverse loose football. It's down on the ground at the 30. I think South Carolina has it. No, Arkansas comes away with it. Well, speaking of playing cards, Steve Spurrier gambled with a little razzle-dazzle, and Desmond Sims forced the fumble recovered by Keith Jackson. All the way around from the outside is Desmond Sims, 23. He catches the quarterback. There's the fumble. Look at this. You dive in there. How about the big guy, Keith Jackson, going after that ball? Watch 99. Moves well the ball. There's the ball on the ground. Now, get to the ball. You dive. It's a tie. Big man wins. 
Bruce to Nutt on the other side. He knows that uh, basically South Carolina returned to favor when Arkansas went for it on fourth down from their 30-yard line, didn't make it. So now a short field for the Hawks. That was that led to South Carolina's first touchdown. And McFadden tripped up for a loss of two on the play. Good pressure from the front four of South Carolina. Yeah, the outside backer might have been Cody Wells. I looked at, I thought it was 24 coming in there, made a pile, and he tripped over the pile. Jonathan Luigs, the right yeah. guard. Yep. Uh, for Arkansas, kind of got tripped up and caused all the problems. Yeah. So here's a second down. This is the kind of down that uh, Houston Nutt does not like. A second and 12. Out of the eye formation. Kennedy is your fullback. McFadden will run to the right. And the fact that he got anything out of that back to the line of scrimmage with five white shirts coming his way is somewhat amazing. Jordan Lindsay will get credit for the tackle, but a man is down. Dreaming of a new plasma TV, gaming system, or laptop computer? How about a million bucks? Bell South is giving one lucky fan a chance to win it all during halftime of this year's Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Log on to bellsouthsports.com to enter the 2005 Bell South Kick 4 Million sweepstakes, and you could win an extreme bundle of home entertainment equipment and a cool million dollars. That man down. Arkansas leading by a field goal, 4-15. And... That injury to Cody Wells, number 24 for South Carolina. He was helped off the field like a possible knee injury. As Casey Dick lines up, fires a bullet, but out of bounds. An incomplete, no flag on the play. Intended for Marcus Monk. Stoney Woodson on the coverage. But let's go back to what happened to Cody Wells. And Dave, as a player, you know that this, oh. this is painful. Yeah, it is. Cody Wells is 24. There he is right there. White shirt. Watch when he gets in here. Good playoff now. He gets an arm on him. When he turns, look at that back leg right there getting fallen on. That's one of those twisting things, a lot like what, what Shockley got in the Georgia game a couple weeks ago. And, Buzz, you've got an update for us? Yep, Rod Walters, the trainer, one of the best in the business at Wells, is out with a right knee sprain. They're taping a bag of ice to it right now. That's a good sign. You hate to see him out, but the fact that they're taping it up may have been one of those hyperextensions, and they're not going back to take x-rays. That does sound like good news, considering everything that uh, could have occurred. As that punt hits the goal line and sails into the end zone so south carolina will take over at the 20. well during the first half we asked you this all tell text to win sec trivia challenge question who holds the south carolina record for most touchdowns scored in a single season well if you thought it was sydney rice just <laughs> we will revisit this question yeah. next season yeah. and we'll have a new one uh harold green is the winner and tune in next week for your chance to play Text to Win SEC Trivia Challenge presented by Altel. Would I be safe saying that Sidney Rice will hold that record? <laughs> yeah, he's uh, 19 is the school record for career touchdowns. Yeah. And he already has a dozen to his name. Boy, the swarming Razorback defense stops Mike Davis. And I think he might have lost a yard or two. Let's check in again with Dave Baker. Dave, I think you got to look for something. I know it was a running play right there, but there's 3.40 on the clock now in the third quarter. Three minutes and 40 seconds for Steve Spurrier, who loves to throw the ball, to take advantage of this win before they turn around for the final 15 minutes of play. That may have been what he was trying to do on the razzle-dazzle the last time they turned it over. Well, Buzz, as we look at their rushing yards, today South Carolina was 17 yards on the ground. They came in averaging 83 a game, which uh, ranks in the Southeastern Conference at number 12 and 113th in the country. And whistles are blown. Timeout was taken. Blake Mitchell called a timeout, so it'll be a dead ball. Wow, that was close, Dave. He called timeout, took his eye off the ball, and they snapped it back. Watch him. You see him call timeout. Timeout right there. He walks away, and that ball is snapped into the end zone. Well, heads up play there. 25. Mike Davis goes and gets it. He can call timeout, but that whistle doesn't blow. <laughs> yeah. He can call timeout all until he's blue in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Davis went back thinking that he didn't get it. You see Madre Hill, running back's coach. And Madre Hill uh, certainly busted onto the 
see. We talk about Darren McFadden and Felix Jones quite a bit. Well, Mondre Hill's a young man that busted onto the scene in a much similar fashion here at Arkansas. And his tenure as a tailback for this Arkansas team. He was an all-SEC tailback for the Hogs in 95. He rushed for a school record 1,387 yards that year. He also scored a Hog record six touchdowns against South Carolina that year. And, of course, he led the Hogs to the 95 SEC title game against Steve Spurrier's Gators. But it was not a good night for the Razorbacks or Madre as they lost 34-3. And Hill was injured in the second quarter with a torn ACL. He had multiple knee problems here. Never really fulfilled the expectations probably of himself and the fans because of that injury. But he was something else when oh. he was healthy. Well, uh, just a little guy, but I mean, you talk about, he played with about a 15-pound heart. Here we go on second and 14. Mitchell out of the shotgun. Here comes some pressure on the outside. Passes off. It is caught on the far side for Kenny McKinley. He is slung down about three yards shy of the first down by Michael Grant. Boy, that was a nice pass by Blake Mitchell. Out pattern finds him. I mean, he threw a strike there to McKinley. Good coverage. That'll give you a little bit of confidence. That ate up a chunk of that yardage they need. Well, Reggie Herring was telling us, you know, Sidney Rice is Sidney Rice, and he's yeah. going to do what he does. But the guy that really scares us as a game breaker is Kenny McKinnon. Yeah. Got to really make you miss and, and take it to the house at any moment. Yeah, another one of those freshmen. Third down and three. Good slam. Incomplete. Coverage by Chris Houston. Oh, man. Houston was man-for-man man coverage on that slant inside. And I mean, he's got McKinley. And watch him rip down the arm. Look at him. See him taking that way down. And he pulls down the arms. That is great defensive coverage. When you pull those arms down, you can't pull the ball in. Houston, the sophomore out of Austin, Texas. Peyton Hill is back to return this punt. Brown having a nice day. 43 and a half per kick this afternoon. Another end over end. Hillis has plenty of time to return it to the 40, to the 42-yard line. 41-yard kick, a four-yard return. Mike West on that special teams tackle. Today's Chick-fil-A nugget of the game, winningest active coaches. Now, by percentage, right now in the country, Philip Fulmer at 78.3. That's He was hanging around over 80. So yeah, things have gone haywire season. here. But Steve Spurrier sitting right there along with Bobby Bowden and Joe Paterno. And look at the resume for Steve Spurrier. We told you on there, you can love him or hate him or whatever you want to do, but you cannot deny the fact that he knows how to coach and win college football games. Absolutely. And that job he did at Duke University. Duke, they haven't had a good season since. He did a marvelous job with them. Here's McFadden to midfield. Close to the first down. He might have gotten to the purple line. Dustin Lindsay with the tackle. Boy, and I thought Kyle Roper came off the center position. You don't think of a center snapping the ball and then getting a block. Watch number 70. He's out there leading the play. You'll see 70 out there. There you see him in the right side of the screen. I almost thought McFadden would uh, dive to the back out to the outside. He turned back in. Again, he looked like he's going for the first down marker. Get the purple line. How about McFadden? He's up to 141 yards on the ground on 24 carries. Yeah, and he's not even tired yet. He's just as fresh as Daisy. Look at him back there. There he is, fans. He'll get the carry again. Stood up by Coach Simpson. Oh, what a hit from Coe. The sophomore to Rock Hill. South Carolina met McFadden and said, hey, number five, how you doing? Yeah. Coach Simpson is 10. Watch this. Bam! Right in the hole. Bam! I love that. They tackled the game. Coach Simpson making himself be known out there. And that first and 10 line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Casey Dick drop back at the 42-yard line. The Adrian Coley with the sack, his second of the year, and that is a big, big loss all the way back to the 43-yard line of Arkansas. 45, top of your screen. Watch him come off the ball inside. He doesn't take the fake. Now, you're not going to step underneath him right there. He thinks that Dick thinks that he's going to slide underneath him. Look at those hands. 
when number 45 Coley gets here he is right here on the line he's gonna he's not gonna take that fake action that way he stays home now watch this you can't step back inside he's got a claw on you good Great coverage play. too I couldn't see which linebacker that was to pick up the tight end after he left his block here's Casey Dick trying to set up a screen it's picked off at the 44 yard line by Oris Lambert the senior from Jacksonville Florida with perhaps a play of the day for the Gamecocks I was just gonna say if you're Casey Dick you don't want to make a mistake and this is a mistake he threw the ball into a huddle of shirts that weren't his color watch this right here he just throws the ball look at 51 go up for that football that's Lambert he just got sky highs in there you don't throw that ball into there you throw it away you eat it but that's a mistake and that's a freshman and how mistake. big was that sack by the Adrian Coley to force the whole turn of events absolutely now now if you're South Carolina capitalize on it the worst you want to get out of this is a field goal try going for it all over the middle McKinley five touchdown South Carolina 42 yards the first touchdown reception of the young career of Kenny McKinley and the 14th touchdown pass by Blake Mitchell Boy, and everything went well on that play, Dave. He had a good offensive line hold up front there. A pocket. He caught McKinley on a post pattern. And we talked about, you talked about McKinley's speed. That's running away from him speed. Heads up play. Doesn't the defense complement the offense? You talked about the sack. You talked about the interception. Touchdown. That's what team play is. And you said they needed to take advantage of the win. Well, that was the last play in the third yeah. quarter, and they took advantage of it. 42 yards. South Carolina reclaimed. Last play of the third quarter resulted in a touchdown strike for South Carolina. They lead by four as we begin the fourth quarter. And, boy, Arkansas, the fact that they just could not put any points on the board. They dominated the time of possession in the third quarter, Dave. 11 and a half minutes to three and a half minutes and have no points to show no. for it. That's huge, too. Now, if you're Casey Dick, you've got to calm down. You just made a mistake. You go over the sideline. You try to forget it. Don't let it affect this series. Felix Jones will take the kickoff and touchback. Ben Wagers right on that line says that will be a touchback and barely. Oh, man. <laughs> Hey, look at that, safety. That's Tyrone Nick. Tyrone Nick said that should be a safety. He's begging for somebody. But well, you know what he's saying. I thought his, I actually thought his foot came on the line, too. I want to tell you, that was awfully close. He started to run out. Watch his foot. Now, watch this, the ball. Watch the ball, Dave. The foot is on the line. The ball is behind. Now that involves a line, so that could be a reviewable play if deemed necessary. But I think that that uh, that that look was pretty conclusive. Yeah, absolutely. Now, don't panic if you're Casey Dick. You've got a lot of time left in this football game. You've got a good running game. Stay with it. Do what you've done best. Here play action. Nice throw to the wide side of the field. Pass is caught by Cedric Washington to the 40. Down to the 30-yard line. Right there by Fred Bennett, but a huge, huge play for Arkansas on first and ten. Dave, again, a 46, their longest pass play of the year. Absolutely. It's an out pattern. He comes downfield, little play action. Now he throws down. He gets great separation on Joseph. That's what makes the play work. He gets separation. And when he comes up, he misses the tackle. This tackles will kill you. And Washington just puts his head down, gets every inch he can. The official got about knocked out on that play. But big play. And that's what Casey Dick needs to do. Well, I asked Coach about Cedric Washington, the wide receiver who had that catch, and he said, you know, Cedric's a big play kind of guy for us. We're waiting for him to make that big play. We need to try to get the ball to him a little bit. Now we know why. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, you concentrate so much on getting at the monk that you forget about the other wide receivers. Well, we haven't forgotten about McFadden to the 30. Down to the 28, Coach Simpson runs him out of bounds. Take a look at our stats through three quarters presented by McDonald's Quarter Pounder and look at the total time of possession. 25 minutes for Arkansas and uh, total yards. The Razorbacks winning that battle by almost 100. 
Yeah, South Carolina has not been able to rush the football, but they haven't needed it. And you see him look down on that arm list. They signal in that play just like you called. That takes so much pressure off the quarterback. He doesn't have to read signals, make adjustments, and they have very few checkoffs. Timeout taken by Arkansas, and for Arkansas, that will be their first of the second half. 14.40 to go in the game. SEC East versus West matchup. Here's a little play action from Casey Dick, and he has dropped for another loss. Dakota Walker, a true freshman from Mays Landing, New Jersey. He steps into the action. And how about the South Carolina team, Dave? 23 sacks coming in. They were tied for first in the league in that department. Three today. Yeah, and what he does, what Walker does, 99, he just gets upfield, keeps the quarterback in the, in the pocket, and there was a no block there by Darren McFadden, number five. Heck of a play there by Walker. Get upfield, sometimes good things happen. You know, Tyrone told us, uh, make it simple. Yeah, exactly. We're going we're gonna to go back to the basics. We're not going to jump all around. We're going to spread them out. Now they're in their 30 count. Three down line. Swing it out to the far side, hoping McFadden can make a play, but not this time. Terrell Davis, the senior at Rock Hill, South Carolina, getting the start today. Has four tackles, and that was probably his best. Boy, this is a tackle. When you've got a safety, it'll come up, or a corner will come up like this. Look at this. Look him right in the eye. Man, you talk about a bear hug, and then get him down. Oh. So Jacob Skinner will be punting. A little bit of wind at his back. Kenny McKinley stands at the 10. When you don't want to punt it in the end zone. I kick. Catch it. I'd spiral. That is caught at the two. A 36-yard punt caught by John Johnson, a cornerback, the junior out of Houston, with a heads-up play, and now South Carolina. This is familiar territory for them. Last week against Tennessee, they got pinned inside their five three times yeah. on Colts with punts. Yeah, I think Steve Spurrier's a little, a little tired of those punts inside. He's like, he was telling us, he goes, have you guys ever heard anything like that three times inside your own five to start a drive? you ever heard anything like that? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> well, now, this is really tough because you don't have a run game and you're in that end zone you're going to try to do a passing game and listen to this crowd come alive and Steve Spurrier knows it and off to Davis he gets three on the play maybe four keep Jackson with the tackle that'll give him a little bit of breathing room well, you want to run the football out of here. You want to make that purple line get to that first down. But it's going to be awfully difficult because South Carolina's not been able to run the ball on the ground. They just have not. They don't have. Well, they've had some success. Mike Davis, seven carries for that's, 60 that's yards. True. That's true. And that one, the one that really kind of makes that all not look well. Ooh, look how big man. Not looking well. Wow. But the one that the the, uh, the snap over the head that that took off on the uh, on the rushing yards. And the play clock down to four. South Carolina only one timeout left. They do get the snap off. It goes to Davis out to the ten. That'll bring up a third down and about a yard and a half. And the clock moves closer to 12 minutes. Boy, Coach Furrier, not happy. I, I think he didn't like the personnel grouping he yeah. had on the field for that play. This is a heads-up play here. Good block up front there, Thurman. Thurman gets a good block, 32. He makes, a, he makes a nice block. But look at Spurrier. He was really upset. No, 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 stay in. He was... <laughs> now, do you pull it down and pass it? Mm. North Carolina over the last six on third down conversions. They give it to Dacus Thurman. And I think he has plenty for the first down. And a flag comes down late. Right in the middle of that uh, pile of players, a flag came in late. When I see one player getting out of there, and it's Terman, 32. They walked him on back. Holly Huffer umpire in the middle. Standing right on top of those uh, group of players. And so he had a good look at whatever was going on. And here comes 10 wagers to break it down for us. Dead ball, personal foul. It's Arkansas. After the play. 
after the play was over. Personal foul. 92 on the defense. Penalty. 15 yards. First down. That's their defensive end, Jamal Anderson. This fall, watch for the Geico College Football Campus Tour, a season-long traveling exhibit celebrating the 10 greatest quarterbacks of all time. Go to jpsports.com for more information and to find out when Geico will be visiting a college campus near you. Well, I still wasn't able to see exactly what occurred in that pile, but obviously uh, it wasn't good news for Jamal Anderson and the Razorbacks. The umpire was right in position to make the call. I wonder, you know, you're trying to get that ball out, rip it out on that... Was a huge play. Here's Davis to the 33-yard line. You know, that just gives them breathing room. It gives South Carolina an opportunity, A, to get out from the uh, end zone, but also just chew up more of this clock as we come closer to 11 minutes to go. And, Dave, all of a sudden you get the feeling that, uh, and I know Reggie Herring is concerned, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, South Carolina is moving the ball on the ground. They ran it out. They picked up a first down. They got that penalty. Now they pick up about three and a half yards on that first down, second down about seven. Hey, maybe they can control the clock with a run game. Davis averaging 7.3 yards per carry for the Gamecocks. Mitchell lofts it up. Pass is bobbled, batted around, caught by Rice, but out of bounds. A remarkable grab, but it'll go for not. He and Michael Coe were exchanging taps over there in front of the Gamecock bench. Boy, Michael Coe, one-on-one, -on -one, number 19. Watch this. He's on out pattern. He's looking back. Look at Coe, and watch him reach his arm. See him put his arm in there? He put his arm right in between the arms and pulled his arm out. Again, look at that right arm. Go in there and pull the ball out. He almost made a spectacular play. And he... Great catch by Rice. Oh, it was. But how about Coe? One on one. No help anywhere. Once again, Antonio Hefner, number 18 for South Carolina. The backup quarterback in at wide receiver. Do you bring pressure? Pressure comes. Mitchell's hit. Pass is caught. Oh, is that close? At the 39-yard line. That is real close. And it's Hefner with his first career grab. Pressure came from John Johnson. Boy. I want to tell you, Blake Mitchell, he saw Johnson coming on him. Look at this. He just short arms it, just darts it off there. Throws a strike. Look at this. Nowhere else to go. And I mean, he didn't make an inch after he caught it. But for Hefner, his first catch, the freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee, switched over to wide receiver this week from his quarterback position. And it's another classic case of... Steve Spurrier and other coaches around the league trying to take advantage of guys that are just good athletes. Yeah, absolutely. Get the best athletes on the field. That's what they like. And off off the left side. Nowhere to run for Mike Davis. Stood up by Freddie Fairchild. Fred, Freddie Fairchild, the freshman from Little Rock. When Steve Spurrier just wants to keep those chains going, keep that clock ticking on down 950 just wants to keep it going this is a big drive for South Carolina started on what the two yard line that was huge talking about all these freshmen here and there I'm looking at South Carolina they've played 28 guys that have made their first career starts this year <laughs> at some point or another 28 that's, a, that's almost half a team <laughs> <laughs> out of the eye formation Davis with the sweep to the 40. Davis to the 46-yard line and a big collision. That was Kelly came over from a safety spot and knocked Davis out of bounds. I love this play. Fake and then pitch it back. Oh, man, what a hit. Boy, that was a sting by Kelly. That'll bring up a third down and about two on this play. This is huge. Reggie Herring, he wants to get pressure. Throw it or run it? No, I think you run it. You run it well. But, but one back. Hey, that's surprising. Look at trying to get a hard count. Now they're audibleizing. Blake Mitchell looking to Steve Spurrier for the change in the play. Quick slant over the middle. Pass is caught first down Gamecocks. Chris Clark. Chris Houston was on him, but uh, Blake Mitchell, Dave, you talked about in the open, and after watching the last couple of games this week, 
He is really solid on these quick slants. Absolutely. Loves that play. Loves that play inside. This time here he finds Chris Clark. You see him audible with that left hand over at him. Look, he's looking at nowhere else. He's just saying, get some separation. And Clark, when it touches him, he catches it. Well, what I've noticed in the, in the last couple of games that I've seen is that rarely does Blake Mitchell leave his receivers out to dry. By, when I say that, by throwing it high exactly. and leaving them exposed. Exactly. Throws a very catchable ball. All right. Down to the Arkansas 41-yard line goes Mike Davis, Fairchild, with another stop. And Dave, when I say a catchable ball, I want to clarify that. What it, I'd ask Steve Spurrier about that. A catchable ball is when you throw it, the nose is up. It kind of comes in with the nose up. And that was one thing he commented about, Blake Mitchell. He says, throws a very catchable ball. His receivers like it. And as you say, he doesn't hang them out in the middle. Well, this, man, this is a tremendous drive. This is about a 59-yard about a drive right now. Started at the two. This is about to be a five-minute drive. Wow. To this point, it's the 11th play right here. Blake Mitchell looking, looking, throws it up and out of bounds. Nowhere to go with it. That'll stop the clock. And so, yeah, it's, uh, this drive started with 13.03 to go in the quarter. Back at the two-yard line. Boy, it was, sure it was compounded by that penalty, but you've got to give South Carolina a lot of credit. They've run the ball. they found a little seams for Reggie Herring. Now the big decision right now. Third down and seven. Do you come with that fire zone where you try to get pressure? Bring Elijah Butu, maybe bring Pierre Brown, but you got to bring somebody to get pressure. You know, Reggie Herring said it's not really a blitz because he may bring some pressure from a linebacker, but he'll sag the defensive end, so it's not a true blitz. He calls it a fire zone. Here's when he needs it. Here they come. A little delayed handoff. Arkansas read it really well. And that'll be Davis down to the 40-yard line. So we'll see what Steve Spurrier has in mind. And that is putting away. And Dave, what they did that time, they broke both inside, slipped the tackles outside, Elijah Butu just slid along the line and found him, number 24. And Buzz, as we look at fourth down, this is an interesting punt. Yeah, take a, take a special look at it, Dave. You know, South Carolina does this little pooch rugby deal, but one thing that Houston not said they've been doing, you see number four, Reggie Fish, he's been the up guy. They're going to be punting in the wind, and they said they put special emphasis on if they do that, Fish trying to get the ball and not letting it roll. Ah! And he dropped it. Reggie Fish dropped it. Who's got it? Wow, did Arkansas come up with that ball? Oh, my gosh. You got to be kidding me. Wow. We will come back after this. What a break for Arkansas. They fumbled the punt, but somewhere, Shedrick Johnson came into that pile and took it away from somebody in a white jersey. So the Hawks have it first down and 10 for the 22. There goes McFadden out to the 30-yard line. Dave, go back. How, oh. how did Johnson come up with it? I don't know. I think Fish, first of all, should have fair caught it. But how in the world do you miss that ball? Look at Shedrick Johnson, 17. Now watch him. Do you see him just keep on moving? He moved those arms, and look right there. Oh, no. That ball was right there. I mean, I don't know why he didn't fair catch it. It's a rugby kick. He's, he's put up there to catch it short. Darren McFadden. To midfield. He is having another unbelievable afternoon. A gain of 21, and that'll take him to 180 yards on the day. Oh my gosh. Well, Dave, that was Shades of Georgia. That's exactly what it was. Pull the offside guard. It's Parker, 74 trap, and then get out there and just explode. If it's not for Co Simpson, it is a Georgia run. I mean, back-to-back -back games, oh. 190 against the Dogs, now 180 here against the Gamecocks. As I said last week, I have seen few freshmen make an impact like this young man, and the close second is Felix Jones, who on that carry takes it down to the 42-yard line. Well, when you're committed to the run, and Arkansas is certainly committed by to the run, man, it is, that is something else. You know, one of the problems Arkansas has faced is that they have fallen behind, and without a passing game, yeah. it really hurts them in a couple of areas. A, they can't really stop the clock as much as they would like to in the passing game, and they just, you know, they, they have to get back in it by running, and with 550, 
to go in a game, you, you don't have a whole lot of time to have any mishaps. Absolutely. You've got to run. You've got to run control. Solid on the scoreboard. As McFadden takes it inside the 40 down to the 38. Now the clock stops while they move the chains for the first down. 539. I know that uh, Houston Nutt would like nothing better than a, about a 35, 38 yard ride, ride right from here. Can't settle for a field goal. Might not get the ball back. Four down opportunity. You got to just keep on plowing. First and ten. Felix Jones breaks a couple of tackles, stays out of, stays on his feet out of bounds at the 27-yard line. That is missed tackle number eight today. That time Dustin Lindsay couldn't grab him around the line of scrimmage. Well, I watched Felton 61 lead around there. There comes 63. That's Lugis. And then Parker 74. And they rumble around. There's like a big red wave coming through. There's the defensive coordinator. That's uh, Tyrone Nixon. He wants, he wants, he doesn't want missed tackles, I can tell you that. But they've got to get some penetration. McFadden, oh, nearly wow. broke. Dave, he's been so close. The man who missed the tackle on the last play, Dustin Lindsay, nearly. Oh, watch this hole. The game. All right, there's, right there, there's the lead back right there. Parker's there, and look at this hole coming through here. Lindsey just dives out right there and just gets a just gets a hand on him. Lindsey is 40. Watch him. Just gets a hand right there. You see him just puts him down with that hand. Second down and short. McFadden again off the right side. He'll be close to the purple line, but he'll be shy about a yard. Chris Hampton on the tackle. Look at Arkansas inside the red zone today. They are two out of two, but one touchdown. One field goal. And that's a look at the red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Boy, that, that time when they got down to the one-yard line and didn't score, that was huge. A right. couple of tight ends on third and short. Hey. McFadden, oh, stood up. Ricardo Hurley, excuse me, Ryan, no, Ricardo Hurley. Stood him up at the line of scrimmage and just plowed him to the turf. Watch the senior 42. He's going to come over and look at that great position. And I mean, that's a stick in the hole. Again, watch him slide, get in the hole, bang, right in there. Boy, I mean, that's a drive him back. You don't see that often. And Arkansas has to take a timeout and think this over with 3.40 to go. It is fourth down and two. Well, I know what I'm, we knew oh. this would go down to the wire. And that is exactly what we have. On fourth down and two, that is a man that will perhaps have the biggest impact on this play. Darren McFadden, 188 yards on the ground. Do you go to him? Absolutely. No doubt. Here's a handoff. McFadden makes a man miss, and I don't know. He did not get it. A yard shy the third time the Hogs have gone for they have yet to make it. Dakota Walker leading the charge for South Carolina. Oh, they got penetration. Doty just comes up in the middle. He's the big guy, 55, and he gets penetration. Makes him cut back inside. You see the purple line. Look at Doty making cut back inside. That was the play before when he got stuck. And look at Doty there. He's celebrating. That was some stand-up play by that defense. Well, here's the situation. Arkansas with only one timeout remaining. There's 3.33 to go. So certainly an opportunity to get the football back. But they need to uh, slow down the South Carolina offense as quickly as they can. Mike Davis, the handoff out over the 20. Gets three, maybe four on the play. Freddie Fairchild makes a stop. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. All right, so Dave, you got a second down right. and six now. 
Well, you can't give up four downs, uh, four yards on first down. That really helps South Carolina. If you're Arkansas, you've got to penetrate. You've got to dart on through. You need somebody like Elijah Butu or Fairchild or Pierre Brown to get in that backfield. He isn't going to pass that ball. Don't worry about that. Look at them all creeping up. Here's Davis off the right side. Nothing happening on that play. No gain. So now you've got a third and six. Now you've got to hurry. You've got to get up off the ball. Use your timeout now. So Houston Nutt. It is third down and six from the 22. Dave, do you run it or do you throw it? I think you throw it, and I'm worried about that guy right there if I'm Arkansas doing that little crossing pattern. Spread formation out of the shotgun. Mitchell over the middle. Passes. Batted down at the 30-yard line. Intended for Antonio Hefner. Sam Elijah who just steps up and makes the play of the game. And now Arkansas will get it back. Underneath, he had plenty of time. Sitting back there, his offensive line gets some time. Look at that. That's just a heads-up play by both of them. I mean, Elijah Buto get. Look at him diving, selling out in there. And how about Randy Kelly coming in there? Both of them selling out on that play, Dave. 2.37 to go. The incompletion stops the clock. Arkansas with no timeouts left. Peyton Hillis. The block is on. They nearly got it, but they didn't. The flag is down. That'll be roughing the punter, and that is the big version. Wow. Kevin Woods came in for the block and caught Josh Brown flush. Houston Nutt says that because he rolls out, he becomes a rusher. Exactly. That's exactly what Houston Nutt is saying. You see his arm going out there? He's saying he runs out of the pocket. He's a runner. Look at him. Now, is it a five-yarder? Because it's fourth down and about seven, I would say. Maybe six and a half. Running into the kicker against the receiving team. That penalty has been declined. First down, Arkansas. Yeah, wouldn't give him the first down. I yeah. thought for sure that might have been the roughing as opposed to yeah. the running. Exactly. But, but you know what? There is a valid point here. It sure is. I mean, that punter came from all the way here, all the way over there with the ball. So he's got a valid point. But you've got to avoid him. You can't run into him like that. Well, he tried to yeah. avoid him, but when he's running to the right. <laughs> he runs right into him. Here, he's got a good point. Regardless, 2.26 to go. Actually, they pick up that flag, so play stands as is. First down and 10 for the Hawks. South Carolina's defense has stood tall for most of this game. Yeah, and watch South Carolina. They're going to go into a two-deep zone. They're going to go into a two-deep zone, and they're going to sit back and try to make him throw underneath and use up all the clock. Dick in his first collegiate start as a true freshman. Let's it go, and it's incomplete on the far side of the field looking for Cedric Washington. Jonathan Joseph on the coverage. Some quick scores for you from around the south. Auburn now putting it on Kentucky. Notre Dame over Tennessee in the first quarter. 14-3. And North Carolina by a pair over B.C., but still some time left in that game. And look at both defensive coordinators. <laughs> both of them signaling. Now, sit back. Make them catch it in front of you. Two minutes and 20 seconds left. And, but if you're Casey Dick, don't make a mistake. But you know who I'd go to? Number 85. Casey Dick has to roll out. He's got some running room. The flag is down as... Dick runs out of bounds. The flag is down back at the 37-yard line. Boy, and that is an odd flag. I don't know if they thought he was going to pass the football, but he never passed it. It was a run all the way. Oh, holding on the outside. Boy, and for Houston Nutt, that just, uh, that digs it deeper. 22 on the offense. Penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. Second down. That's on Peyton Hillis. Just a sophomore, but he seems like he's a senior. There's 22. That's the hold that they're saying. Peyton Hillis. Oh, look, when he comes out, look at Hillis. Look at him. He's got a death grip on him. He's not letting him come out. That is a costly, costly oh, penalty. Sure is. The only bonus to that is that they'll actually, you know, get second down over again. Yep. But the clock is at 2-11, and now they need to go. 
And Dave, you're 73 yards. And Dave, you're a freshman quarterback. You don't have a favorite wide receiver because you haven't been up there taking enough snaps. But if you want to throw to somebody with excitement, try to find number 85. He will go up and get the ball for you. Pass is high. Knocked out of bounds, incomplete. Batted in the air by Jonathan Joseph. Boy, and credit South Carolina. They're coming with a lot of pressure. They're flushing them out of the pocket. He tries a little touch pass right there. South Carolina right in good position there. That is good coverage coming across there. That's Jonathan Joseph. Steve Spurrier has seen this the yeah. last month of the season. He had it last week. Same scenario. Absolutely. Except that a 16-15 game. And Tennessee had the ball trying to score the winning points. But here it's Arkansas. The Gamecocks trying to win their fourth consecutive conference game. He's got a lot of time now. Steps up in the pocket. Oh. This is caught out over the 40 to the 43-yard line by Cedric Logan. And that'll make it fourth down and about five, or actually about four. Watch Logan come back inside. He comes all the way across. You try to help out your quarterback when you see he's in trouble, and he makes a beautiful catch. Now, fourth down and about five or six yards to go. You run the play in. Logan comes to the sideline. He got hurt. What some pressure. You want to be a hero? Here's your opportunity, Casey Dick. First game. Just make this first down and keep the drive going. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Marcus Monk, and South Carolina has done it. They have come on the road in back-to-back -back weeks to beat Tennessee and Arkansas. And watch Coe Simpson here. He's looking all the way at the quarterback and just comes up there right there. But good coverage. A lot of time. You see the late pressure there. Number 47 coming in there. That's late pressure on him. But how about South Carolina? You talk about stepping up. You, you set the scene. They stepped up against Tennessee, and they stepped up today. Well, they have either trailed or been tied at halftime in their last four games. They were tied with Kentucky and Vandy. Came back to win. They were trailing against Tennessee and against this Arkansas team, but they found a way to win in the second half. It's just... Uh, clock continues to move at 105. This last touchdown, the winning strike from Blake Mitchell to McKinley over the middle. The last play of the third quarter. Makes that a successful drive and another $500 for the SEC's education initiative courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and you too can be a successful driver. How about South Carolina? Still in the race in the SEC East. The Gamecocks are now 4-1 this year in games decided by 10 or fewer points. And they are now officially bowl eligible in Steve Spurrier's first season at the helm of the Gamecocks. Well, if you told me that, I'll tell you right now, it takes some time to rebuild, but what a marvelous job. Where did he ever come up with Blake Mitchell? I mean, he's just the guy on the team, but uh, comes out and plays so well for Steve Spurrier. So Houston Nutt and his club, they fall to 0-5 and, and out of the bowl picture with the loss. They are now 2 and six on the year, but the Spurrier-led Gamecocks go to six and three and four and three. We will come back and have more after this. <laughs> 